Hi everyone, welcome to The Pen Habit, and today I'm going to be doing the review of a pen uh, from a company I've never never used before. So this is a review of the Levenger True Rider Select, and Levenger is a U.S.-based company, I believe. Uh, they, they sell other pen manufacturers, but they also make their own. I don't know a lot about the brand. Um, they've got a nice website, uh, but I, I've, I've always wanted to try their pens. I've heard good things about them. I think some of their pens are quite attractive, so I figured I would give the Levenger True Rider Select a try. So here's how the pen comes. Uh, comes in the white cardboard package, as always. You remove that, the sleeve, and you get the Levenger box. And then, to open that box, it's kind of a little ridiculously overpackaged, in my opinion. Uh, this flap comes down, and you can take out yet another box. <clears throat> so this is the pen itself, and it comes in a nice wooden pen coffin here. It says Levenger across the top. You can see it comes with a booklet, a cartridge, and this actually came inside the pen, and the converter was slotted out here, but I've inked it up already. So, um, And then we get to the pen. Now, the very first thing I noticed about this pen was it's really, really got a very pretty material. This is the Mediterranean blue color, just a really nice swirly blue resin. Um, it actually reminds me a fair bit of the, the blue resin used in my Salvador Dali pen from Visconti. Uh, very swirly, eye-catching, really nice color, uh, this, the, this Mediterranean blue. The second thing that catches my eye is that this pen is mammoth. Absolutely huge. So for comparison, here's a Visconti Homo sapiens. A uh, Edison Collier, and a Montblanc 149. So you can see it is a big honking pen. Um, that being said, it, there's something interesting about this pen. It's big, and it it's very well made. It appears to be very well made, but it's not... It doesn't feel in proportion to me. And I know that's kind of vague, and I'm not really sure what I mean by that, other than it just feels a little out of proportion. It's comfortable. In, well, I'll, I'll get to that part in a little bit. Let's let's talk through the pen. I'm going to zoom in just a bit here. Okay, so start at the top. The finial has a little uh, jewel here of the same Mediterranean blue material. Come down, got the nice cap shape on here. The clip is very stiff, but uh, feels very solid. It's actually a little hard to get under there, but um, nice solid clip, silver, uh, like chromed material. Levenger says across the band, cap band and on the back, it says select. Nice barrel here, and then another little jewel on the bottom of that same Mediterranean blue. The threads are nice and smooth on the pen, and the threads are acrylic, and they're not metal but it does come with a metal section and a, a, just a nice large number six, it appears to be a number six sized Levenger branded nib. Uh, now I don't know who makes Levenger's nibs, but uh, whoever does, they do a good job because this is a nice nib. It's very smooth, has been my experience so far. The design on the nib is kind of pedestrian. There's nothing special about it, but that's okay. It's I don't need a, a flashy nib like a Pelican or a Mont Blanc. Uh, so this, uh, this, yeah, it fits with the shape of the pen. Um, so that's, that's the kind of design of the pen as I, I actually don't remember if I did mention or not. It's cartridge converter, comes with a converter, but it's, uh, seems to be like a fairly standard Schmidt style, um, international standard converter. So it can use international standard cartridges as well. And uh, it's a very pretty pen. Um, despite it being a very pretty pen, uh, there's something about it that doesn't feel quite right in the hand to me. And it's it's minor, like I'm being uber nitpicky here, but it, it feels a little off 
and I'm not sure why. I've, I've been playing around with it for the last few days, trying to figure out, um, and, and I think it has to do with the section, but I'm not sure. So you notice, again, it's a metal section, and it merges into the, the acrylic of the barrel, but I end up holding it right here, and I can hold it a little bit lower, and that's fine, but I, I prefer to hold a little bit further back, and so I'm right on that junction between the metal and the acrylic. The threads aren't sharp, and the step down is very minor. You can see here from the profile view. It's just a very minor step down, but I think that's what it is that, that's making me feel just a little bit uncomfortable with the pen. Now, that being said, this is not a pen that I dislike using at all. Um, it's just not one that, you know, sings to me when I sit down to write with it. So uh, it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. It's just a little weird for my hands. Um, so that being said, let's talk measurements. It's a big pen. So you are looking at 151 millimeters when it is capped like this, 151. 135 uncapped, and it can be posted, but why in the world you would, I don't know. Um, and it's not terribly back heavy when posted, but you're looking at 172 millimeters, which is just way too long, in my opinion. Grip is 11 and a half millimeters, and which is just getting to be a little wide for what I, I like. I, you know, I've talked about it before, 10 and a half to 11 is what I prefer. So that may be a little bit why I'm not as comfortable with this pen either. 13.8 um, millimeters at the widest point of the barrel and 16.4 millimeters at the widest part of the cap. And then I'm, uh, yes. And then for weight, it's a nice mid-weight pen. It's 24 grams uncapped with ink and the converter, and 38 with the cap and the either posted or, or capped. So um, it's a little heavy when posted, which is another reason why I, I don't really think this is a, a pen that's meant to be posted. So, you know, other than that, I really can't complain about it too much. I really do like this material. Uh, it's the metal section, I'm not super thrilled with. I wish they would have made a slightly more ergonomic section out of the same acrylic material. I think that would have been really nice. Um, and I don't think it needs to be this this long. This is actually maybe one of the only times you'll ever hear me say, but, say this, but I feel like for this pen and this material, it's a little too big. Um, but like I said, these are just really minor nitpicky things. Uh, where this pen really does shine is in the writing. And the nib on this thing is really, really smooth. I got a fine nib. I'm playing around with a few fine nibs a little bit more recently um, because I've got tons of mediums and a, some bold or some broads and stubs and italics, but I don't have very many fine nibs. So I wanted to get a couple of fines. Uh, the other thing to mention is Levenger is one of those great companies who actually does sell different nibs for the pen. So you can buy one pen and three or four different nibs. I really wish a lot of other companies would do this. Sailor, I'm talking to you. Um, but uh, but so if, if you get a pen and you don't love the nib or you want a couple different nibs, it's pretty easy to swap them out. You can just get a separate nib. In fact, I, if I'm remembering correctly, Levenger actually sells a a pack of nibs. So you can get, you know, four or six nibs or something like that in all their different sizes. So writing. This is the Levenger True Writer Select. This is the Mediterranean Blue, and I'm going to massacre T E R R. Eh, maybe, I don't know. I don't know if that's spelled correctly. Mediterranean. Well, we'll find out, I suppose. Spelling. Not my strongest suit. This is the Mediterranean blue finish. Nib is a steel nib in fine. And the ink for today is Private Reserve Electric DC Blue. Nice dark blue color. Okay, now our little quote.
All right. So I find the pen when I'm writing, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gripping it tighter. I'm, I'm getting cramped up earlier than I normally would. And I have a hard time with consistency of letters. I mean, I always have a hard time with the consistency of my letters, but even more so with this pen for some reason. Uh, again, and I'm not sure if it's, I don't think it's weight. I just think it's the way it, it sits in my hand. Not bad, just need, need a little more time with it, I think. But you'll notice not a lick of hard starting, not a lick of skipping, really solid ink flow. Um, and I've done nothing to the nib, no tine alignment, no smoothing. It's, it's, it was ready to go right out of the box. Um, which I I always appreciate when a fountain pen company can can do that goes to the effort of doing that. Um, it's for a fine nib. It's actually pretty decently wet. Um, it's 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 a nice wet floaty feel ink flow, and I really do like it a lot. Um, there's not much in the way you can coax a little bit of line variation out of it, but not a ton um, and requires a fair bit of pressure to do so. And upside down, it's a little scratchier, but still not bad. Um, and quite a f uh, an extra fine line there as well. Uh, yeah, it's a nice pen. Is it... 116, I think it was 164, 169, something like that. Uh, dollars nice. Materials wise, I'd say yes. Uh, this materials wise, this is reminds me in a lot of ways of um of a Visconti. You know, I've I've mentioned that a couple times, but uh, I, I really do like the materials uh, that the pen's made out of. Design wise, it it doesn't feel quite as refined as a Visconti might. It's also a fair bit cheaper than my Salvador Dali by comparison. Um, steel nib, so it is on the higher end of pens with steel nibs for those people who are seriously concerned about that. I'm not one. Um, but uh, it, it is quite a, quite a lovely pen. And if, I think if you like very large pens, this is one where you might want to give it a try. Uh, it's, it's, Got a nice heft to it, but it's not overly heavy. Uh, the nib is wonderful, uh, really, truly wonderful. Levenger might be another one of those companies where if I ever need to replace a number six nib in a pen, I might just go to them instead if, they're, if their standalone nibs are like the one in this pen. So all in all, I like it. I don't adore it, but I really like it. You know, I'm not going to give it an out of 10 score, but it's certainly up toward the top there. Uh, especially this material. This Mediterranean blue is really quite attractive. So that has been my review of the Levenger True Writer Select. I believe this pen comes in two other colors as well, two or three other colors. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, you can find it at levenger.com. Uh, and if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below or head over to penhabit.com. Check out the blog post over there. You can also send me an email at penhabit at gmail.com. And thank you as always for watching. We'll see you here next time on The Pen Habit.